You're listening to a recorded session at PodsCamp 2016 in Austin, Texas, sponsored by WP Engine. Welcome to Building a Complicated Site with WordPress and Pods. Introducing our speaker, Nick Bodick. So, well, welcome. Good morning. And, um, yeah. Did everybody have a good time yesterday who was here? Yeah. Yes. Everybody excited who, who wasn't here yesterday? Excited to be here? Great. So, I'm Nick Baddock, and I, uh, I have now rewritten my presentation. Uh, well, I forgot how many times I've rewritten my presentation because I was, I was watching yesterday, and there was, uh, there was a number of what's and some lo- lots and lots of how. But it occurred to me as, as, as we were going through this that one of the things that we have not talked about is the why. So, so what, what are the big, you know, what, like, like why are we learning pods, why are, why are we using it, and, and all like that. So I, I thought I'd put some, some of this in, into perspective, uh, because after all, I'm the wise guy. So the, uh, bum bum. So, so one of the things I wanted to talk about was that a lot of the discussion has been, hey, I can extend a post type, I can add a taxonomy to something that, that you know, I can, I can add these little additions to my site. But in my mind, this is, this is kind of like using a Maserati to go to the end of your driveway to pick up a newspaper. It's, uh, it may be a lot of fun, but there's, there's a lot more power that if you just cut it loose, you will, you will, I'm going to move that down a little bit, uh, that you, you know, you, you, you'll get more, more fun and more benefit. So one of the things I wanted to do was, was talk about and, and give you a scope of what you can do with pods. So I'm going to, I'm going to paint you a big picture here. The, I like to start with a story. Now, some years ago, I took a, uh, a business course, and one of the instructors there uh, had made his, his fortune in men's clothes. And he said, let me tell you a little dark little secret about this particular industry. He said, beyond $1,200, there's not a single thing that you can do to a man's suit to add value. That's the, that's the finest material, that's the silk linings, that's the hand-carved elk antler buttons, the whole bit, I mean, that's it. You, you, you top out at 1200 bucks. He said, beyond that, it's just the label, it's just the name. So conversations have come up in a number of instances from, 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 from a lot of people as, as we're talking about the, the, the higher-priced websites, the, the issue of, so how much bling, how much, how much visual fluff do I need to add to a website to get somebody to pay $50,000, $100,000, $200,000 for a website? What, what do I have to do to get into that ballpark? I mean, is this the, you know, is this thing, sing and dance, do I got balancing 3D stuff and, and, and all? And the answer to that is none of it. You, you, we're, we're going for the, for the, for the boring side of the equation. And one of the things to understand is, is the motivation of why businesses do what the, the, they're, they're doing. With your advertising and marketing, for example, if, if you're making 10 cents of profit on a widget, you have to sell nine widgets to break even, 10 widgets to, to, to make profit. So, meaning if you spend $100,000 on a website, you have to have a million dollars worth of sales to make profit. So very few businesses are going to do that. That's, that's just not a realistic thing. On the other hand, if you, if you look at expenses, if you can eliminate $100,000 worth of expense in that organization, it's the equivalent to adding a million dollars worth of sales. So when you present to businesses the idea of, I can help you improve your back-end processes to the point that you're, you're going to lower your labor expenses, you're going to improve the speed of operation, you're going to capture more sales, all the things that you're going to do, then that's a very easy sale for a lot of businesses. So what we're really looking at doing is helping businesses improve the way they run their business. And what that is the number of components that that involves. So, so there's the business processes. 
how you do what you do. There's the business, the, the methods. So walking through and, and step by step going through, through all this. For the business owner, the CEOs, the managers, and so on, how do you take your, your vision, your mission? I mean, you've painted this big picture of what you want your business to do. Well, one of the neat things that you can do as that business owner is by systematizing your business, you now sort of enforce this structure. This is how I want things to happen. So this is what the back end of my website does. You fill in these particular particular blocks of information. You have to have this done in, before you can go to that. So it's, it's, it's creating a structure for things so, so that the vision and mission is not just this thing you've printed out upon a business card. Now actually you're implementing it is, as part of your operation. You got the administrative part. So how do the different parts of your organization, for example, communicate with each other? We all know that, that every every business has this great hierarchy, and and theoretically, it's it's you report to your boss, who reports to his boss, who reports to his boss, who reports to CNO, CEO, who then talks to one of his his delegates on the one down. And we know that none of that actually happens. These two guys at the bottom talk to each other in the hallway, and that's the so so that, that's where that's where business really happens. So the idea of implementing that reality in the back of your site so that information goes to who needs to, to, to have it from who needs to, to, uh, to supply it is one of the tools that we can do. Of course, the analytics, we all know from, from, from our Google Analytics the idea of you know, who's landed on a page, who's clicked on a thing, who's abandoned a shopping cart, information like that. But there's a lot of analytics that happen within or can happen within a business itself. There's a, there's a style of business management known as business by ratios, where the idea is if you know what your expenses are and your revenues, if you know how long things are supposed to take, then you can have for each unit of your operation a ratio that I know that it's supposed to take this long, it's supposed to make this much money. If it, and, and, and if numbers get off anywhere, then all of a sudden you start to see aberrations in your ratios. You can pinpoint parts of your operation that are not working as efficiently as you expect. Of course, the business intelligence part of this too is all the, I mean, lots, lots of tracking information. How many, you know, how many things have you, did you sell this, this week as opposed to, to selling this last week or this time a year before or whatever the circumstances and things have changed. So pretty much what we're looking at is the idea of integrating the whole back end operations of a business through a WordPress website. Now, put this in perspective. There's got this out of a business uh, site for, uh, I forget the name of the site. Anyway, but it was, it was talking about the integrated backend packages that are available. So Microsoft, for example, has their Microsoft Dynamics, which as they were explaining is the, you know, the, the, one of the cheapest out there with average cost of operation of about a half a million dollars. SAP, as, as most people who have ever dealt with it know, is, is in the million dollar and up range. So if companies are willing to spend a million dollars to integrate their back end operation, they're certainly willing to spend 10% of that or 20% of that to do it on a platform like WordPress. That's, that just makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're, so things for example, so, so, the, so the question is explaining the idea of the, the, the integrated back end. So here's the case of if you have your HR management, your document management, your sales and marketing, not just from the standpoint of, of how do we sell, but, but your, your support for your sales team. So information and uh, your, your internal communications, the, uh, your, your accounting and finance, that, uh, that all of, you, you, you in essence have one dashboard. Now in, in most cases, we're familiar with, you go into a company, you have this dashboard or, or you have these apps on your computer which are installed locally. 
And what I'm talking about is let's take that local application off of your computer that, uh, you know, or, 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 or is networked through, through a company. Let's take it off of there. Let's put it up on the cloud and stick it as part of your website. Now, interestingly enough, your, your internal operations, your intranet, and your public Wi-Fi, uh, pub public site is, is, is now integrated into one. That, uh, that when your sales team, when your marketing people, when your CEO is traveling and just signs into his WordPress dashboard, can see everything that's going on inside the company. So even things like, you know, rather than necessarily having email, having an internal chat, internal communication thing that's, that's built into WordPress so that it's not a case of, of, you know, you can direct it specifically to who you want to and you can follow that communication path. So, so things like that are, are, are part of them. Does that make sense? That's, that's the high end. That's the enterprise level clients. Yeah. But where we're looking at is prob probably in, in the, the, as businesses and, and typically where we're looking at, say, the professional, enter, uh, you know, the professional uh, law lawyers, doctors, and so on like that, uh, probably the low end would be 500,000 to, to a million in revenue. Typically, once you, once you cross that million dollar mark, so the one, one to 10 million in revenue range, what classically was known as the small business as opposed to the emerging business, they're wanting and needing this type of thing. Typically, that's where you, you have enough employees that, that uh, somebody has to remind you what, 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 what that person's name is because uh, you know, you've, you've now grown beyond just, just uh, you know, three, three people in a, in, in, a, in a garage. So, so what I'm going to do then is we're going to start with a case study. And because it's, uh, it's Austin, we're going to start with a case study for a nonprofit. Because because uh, nonprofits doesn't mean that they don't have profit. It just means that they can't share it with the you know they they, they don't issue stock. It means that they, they still need to make money and run their operation like a real business. So this particular case study is for the Austin Disaster Relief Network. One of the things I want to do here is just sort of quickly lay out what it is that they do as an organization, so that we can then begin to to zero in and take a look at what are the parts of this that we would automate and how we would go about this. So first and foremost, it's a disaster relief agency. What they do is in times of, of disasters, fire, floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, um, whatever, uh, that, that, that they go in and they, first, they, they provide Emer immediate emergency stuff, so emergency housing, food, shelter, replacing clothes, getting people, uh, you know, in, in, into, into safe environments, uh, medical care if it's necessary, and things like that. On top of that, the uh, they w they're one of the few organizations that does extended uh, aid. So what they will do is actually stay with. Uh, they'll, they'll assign people to stay with a family. Because there's a lot of folks, say, uh, you know, Red Cross, for example, or FEMA will come in. They'll be there for a week or two. They'll, they'll help get you out of the immediate danger. But things like replacing all of your lost ID, uh, replacing, you know, your, your, your critical medications or medical devices or things that were, may have been lost in the fire or flood, uh, getting you into a housing, getting you new furniture, uh, household items, things like that. So it's, it's kind of walking through. Also includes emotional support. So the little kids who wake up and panic in the middle of the night every time it rains, uh, now they'll, they'll, they'll get them uh, some, some care and some counseling, that type of thing. The, uh, it is uh, a very interesting organization. They have seven part paid people and 5,000 volunteers. So it's almost entirely volunteer run. And part of, uh, a big part of what they do is the training that they need to make sure that the people who go out in the field actually know what they're doing. So they have conflict intervention, stress management training, the uh, community emergency response training, the uh, national incident management 
training and so on like that, so they can interface with the police, fire department, um, FEMA, uh, Homeland Security. I mean, the, so, so you, it's, it's a very intense training process. Also the idea of personal readiness, because the best way to, 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 to serve in times of a disaster is not to be part of it. So things that you need to do to prepare yourself, and uh, they, it's, it's a, it is a faith-based organization, so it works for the churches with the understanding that you prepare churches to become emergency shelters, to supply extra, extra food reserves, emergency supplies for, for the volunteers, and so on. The, so when a disaster occurs, this whole big operation just spins up. So they have a call center operation that they, they, they do. They, um, for example, during the, uh, the last Halloween flood, they fielded 35,000 phone calls uh, in, uh, in about a, a three-week period. They have the donation center, so because everything that they do is, is through donations. They've got the warehouse operations, the emergency supply centers, the volunteer deployment that they, they, they have to track, because actually there's federal requirements that every person who's out in the field in terms of times of disaster, you need to know their whereabouts, how long they were there, who they reported to, what they did, all of that, because uh, FEMA being a wonderful government organization actually charges the states and locales for their services. So volunteer time can be charged back against that, that fee. So there's some very real reporting needs and, and requirements. And of course the survivor management part of this. The, uh, now one of the things, because this particular model has been so successful, various places that they have responded, like uh, the city of West in, in, in Texas where the, uh, the, uh, the plant, plant explode, exploded and, and, uh, and all those people were killed. Uh, they they uh, they went there. That uh, and the city of West basically said, "This you 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 are one of the most effective aid agencies that has helped us. Can we build? Can can you help us develop a local one like this? More Oklahoma after the tornado hit. Similar request. Uh, they just got back from from uh, some serving some some profoundly underserved areas that got hit by the floods in Louisiana. So there's requests from all these areas saying, can we have something like this? So we looked at that and said, you know what, this would be a perfect application for multi-site. That we could basically create this one site and somebody else says, hey, can we have one like it? Click, 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 done, there you go. Now you've got, uh, you know, as, 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 as fast and easy as that. So, so we looked at that and because of the complexity of the information, the amount of information to start with, but, but the complexity of the interaction, we decided that pods was just about the only way that we could do this. So first step was the process analysis. We had to go through and just look at the whole operation, how all the parts were tied together. And this is sort of just a, this is, this is a high level overview of their, their, their operation, the back, back end. So we, as we start to see, we had it, break it broken down into seven basic parts. There's the volunteer component of it, which, which is the who, who has done what, who has trained, what, what qualifications they have, what certifications they have, so on like that. There's actually the training module itself, so putting together the curricula and managing the, 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 the training courses. There's the document management part of it because there's, a, there's all kinds of documentation because doing things like helping families recover lost medication, helping families recover lost documents. There's personal identifiable information, there's HIPAA and PCI compliance and all like that. So the management of who gets to see what, when, under what circumstances, for how long and when that gets revoked is a nightmare, but it's a uh, but but that's that that's a big piece of it. The uh, the disaster component, management component of it that spins up, and all the operations that go into place. The donation center, which which ca uh, covers both the cash donations, the physical, so people who say I've got clothing, I've got furniture, I've got you know whatever. The uh, even even uh, uh, you know like Walmart that supplied um, uh, 5,000 shovels and wheelbarrows 
for, for, for helping you know clean clean out uh, houses and stuff. So so the physical donations, and then there's the in-kind uh, service donations. So somebody who says I've got a warehouse, I've got trucks, I've got uh, front-end loaders. So if you need them, type of thing. So all the tracking of that that goes in. The uh, and then the uh, the final piece is this, or, well, our last two pieces is the survivor intake component of it, which which is matching the survivors with the resources that they need, and also doing things like data val validation because one of the problems that they have is just because it's a time of disaster doesn't pe keep people from from doing nefarious things because they, what they found in in tracking because it was up here to four it's all been a paper based system is they would have people miles away from a disaster coming into the disaster centers going, you know, my house was washed away, and then they'd get these, 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 these checks and these benefits, and then we'd find out, uh, you know, like, like four weeks later that, that, you know, it's like, you didn't live anywhere near it, you know, but of course by that time the money's been spent. So, so doing real-time data validation to say, you know, are you in the, you know, so, so, so matching addresses to, to to things in the field. And, and the executive management side of this, where are my people, what are they doing, how much money has been spent, how many people have we put into hotels, you know, that kind of stuff. So, so a lot of very critical real-time information needed to be captured. So our second step was doing the rapid prototyping. So here's where we took the information that we had gathered in the process and started building out our rough wireframes of these are the different components. This is how the back end of the system is going to hang together. So when somebody signs into their dashboard, depending on a lot, it's all role and responsibility based access to, to this. So who are you within the organization? Who are you during a time of deployment? So you may take on a new role, uh, a, a sector lead or something like that where suddenly you need to have access to certain parts of it, the internal communications, so that you can see what's, uh, you know, where, where, where your team is at and what they're, they're doing. So a lot of information that goes on there. Also for the people who are uh, assigned to shepherd the, the families through their various uh, recovery efforts, they need to be able to enter information see who's, uh, be, uh, there, there was uh, uh, instances of, uh, again, going back to fraud, where, where um, families would send multiple family members through different lines, each, each one getting stuff, and, and, and it, it wasn't caught until like four, four, four different people were assigned to the same family, and they went, hey, 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 uh, you know, that's a, uh, I think, so, a lot, a lot of that goes on. So, so this is this was a big part of of the need. The there was the data analysis part of it because they currently had information in a database, but to my perspective, we're doing every, everything backwards. So it was all information was filled out on pieces of paper. So everybody did handwritten forms in the field. All those forms came in. There were bunches of people who typed like crazy, doing their best to to read, uh, scrawl, scrolled handwriting on on wet pieces of paper, uh, in in uh, you know at at uh, at three in the morning, so 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 that that would be available, you know, sometime relatively soon for the uh, you know for the for the next group of people, and lots of problems there. That information was then being entered directly into the to, to a MySQL database by someone doing data entry with PHP MyAdmin. So there was no data out, n validation, no verification, stuff was getting entered into wrong fields. So there's a lot of, of uh, um, they actually had 92 tables in the database very few relationships between the tables, lots of duplication. There's 14 different tables where an address would be entered, and for the same person, there'd be variations in the address. So, so things like that that we needed to to uh, to analyze that data, figure out how to to connect it, clean it up, and so on. So, so one of the things I wanted to do here is the this. So, so here's where we're getting into the pods part of this. So we're going to look at the training module. So we, we start out, we know that we have a training class. So this, this 
There, this essentially is our curricula. To that, we've got our training event. So each class is going to be taught several, several times. And each time that it's taught, there's going to be multiple days. So it may be, there's, there, there are some one-day classes, but most of them are four-day or 10-day or, or you know, several weeks. There's the location. So for the uh, uh, community emergency response training, there's four classroom days, and then there is a disaster simulation where a team of people go out, create this, this find, you know, they find a field, create this nice disaster scenario, hide things, and, and uh, you know, set up uh, diff different scenarios, and people get to actually go and use the training that they learned in a simulated disaster situation. So we have four classroom locations, one that's, that's somewhere off. So, tra so connecting locations with, with, the, uh, with which of the sessions. Now, we're going to factor in our users, because obviously users need to, to register for this. And the user registration is in, includes, do they have the prerequisites? Do they pay their money? Do they have, you know, it's all the things that they needed for signing up? And did they attend all of the sessions? So now we'll start to organize this. This is now our thought process in, 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 in the pods structure. So we know that we need to connect the training event to the training class. And so we have this relationship. Now, this is a one-to-many relationship. We have one class, and we'll have multiple instances where it's taught. The, this is going to get a little geeky here, but, but that's, uh, I figure you're, you're up for it first thing on a Saturday morning. And so, so next thing we want to do is we want to connect our events, or our, our sessions, to the event itself. So here again, we'll have a one-to-many relationship. There's going to be one event. There'll be four classes or 10 classes as it, with, with each of those events. And we'll have our training locations. Now, we've got a one-to-one -one relationship between the event and the location because it's only at one spot. Maybe different, of course, different spot for each, each, each session, but or, or for, for each, there, there may be multiple spots for the training event itself, but for each session, it's only going to be at one. Now, we could set up a relationship between the, the training event and all those locations. So, and, and, and what, this, is, this, is, this is one of the things that in setting up database relationships, typically, you know, we, we, we look at how, do, how are we going to establish our connections between the things that we want to relate. But this is not necessary with pods, because pods has what's referred to as traversals. So we're going to get to that in, in just a little bit. Now we'll, we'll, we're, we're, we're going to hook in our user pieces. So we've got our user, we've got our user registrations. And the user registration is going to, so one user registers for the course. That registration has one connection to the, uh, to the event itself. And finally, we've got our attendance. So the attendance is going to be connected to our sessions. So here we're starting to build out our structure. So as, as we're looking at our pods and looking at relationships, and, and, and they talked about yesterday the relate, related fields. So now this is what we have done, is we have now mapped out what are the related fields for, for this. Now, going back to the the, the, the idea of, of, of overthinking our databases, which is one of the common problems. The idea of thinking, okay, well, we need to connect one user to all our users. We need to have all our users connected to all of our registered users. We need to have a, 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 a connection between all the registered users and the, and the training events. We need to have all the attendees, so single attendees connecting to, to, to the full attendee list and the attendees to all the sessions. And my point here is that absolutely none of that is necessary because pods itself can traverse these tables. So what's this, and, 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 and the idea of, for example, user to user attendance. We already have a natural connection there because both of those tables are going to have a user ID. 
So when we talk about relational databases, it's basically where we just say, I have one field in this, in this table. I have one field in this table. If the content of this field and the content of this field match, we have a relationship. That's it. I mean, that's a that's relational database in 36 seconds. So the, uh, but, but the idea of the traversals here is user connects to user registration. Registration connects to training event. Training event gets me my connection to my sessions. Sessions gets me my connection to my location. So now I have a chain that I can follow, that I can go from user to registration, from registration to event, from event to, to session, from session to location. That gives me, I can, I can now traverse that, that full chain and get to any information in that that I want. So the question, of course, is how do I go about doing that? Well, there's, this, is, this is where we get into some of the geeky code. The, uh, so what we see here is, this is where we set up our, our um, traversal. Sorry, that's a, coffee hasn't hit yet here. So, so here we have user registration dot training event dot post title. Now post title is the field that's provided by WordPress. So that's a natural built-in WordPress. That's our basically the you know where where you put your title in. But what we're what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, go go and get my registration, find the training event that's connected to that registration, and get the name of that training event. So I say registration find parameters. So I'm looking for my November cert training. So now just by, by, by following this chain, and I can stretch this out as far as I want. So I could have user registration dot training event dot event session dot location, and I can, I can follow that, that chain. If I wanted to, for example, uh, you know, I could do user to user registration to training event to, to event session to user attendance, but like I said, I already have a, a natural connection here with, with the user ID, so I don't have to traverse it in this way. Now, for those people who are more familiar with the WP query notation, the same thing also applies, where here I can have, because you understand this, it's a key value type, type of thing, so I can say my key is user registration dot event, so I can, I can follow this, and I'm looking for, this is the name of this course, my value, and you can, you can cascade these. So, so you can have, multi, so and, so it can be this event, and uh, username is like Ken, and attendance is complete, and, 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 and. So I can just have, just repeat that array down and down and down and down and down. No, I'm st I'm strictly a back end guy, so so I I, I, so I leave the, I leave the front end to the <laughs> to the experts <laughs> to the experts. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, no, no. Uh, <laughs> but conceptually, I'm but, the user. So, so what, what do I see? So con conceptually, in the, in this particular case, you are going to see this this is this is uh, in, uh, and maybe not a particularly good example here because all I'm displaying is the course name or the or the instance name, but. What, um, it's, a, it's a problem with rewriting a course in the middle of the, and it's, uh, you know, multiple times. But, but the idea is, is that, that uh, yeah, so in this case, all I'm going to be displaying is the event. But if I had gone one step further, if I had dot event sessions, then, then, then I would show, here, here are the classes for, here, here are the week one, week two, week three, week four. So the idea of what, what information am I getting from this? So I can get, for example, um, like what, um, uh, you know, what, what, what were the dates that this particular, you know, of, of, of this, this, this event. So I can get the name of the course. I can get when it was taught and who attended and where it was located, where, where each of the sessions was located. So. It's a, May I add, and I, I can, think I can okay. bridge this gap here. Okay. If you will just, if you'll look at the pods.io, the schedule page, it's mm -hmm. got the list of schedule. So that kind of gives you an idea of what he's coming at. 
notifications. The presenter, all of that comes together in a display on the page. Well, yeah, so like a, so a calendar, yeah. It displays right. on the page so that all this information is easily. Mm -hmm. so, so typically for my front end people, I'm concerned with how do I get the data to them that they can format. So, so I let the CSS people do with the what, what is it going to look like part. But, uh, but just bearing in mind that you can jump into this picture essentially anywhere. So if I have, current, say, say for example, current user ID, so with everyone that's logged in, you by definition have your current user ID. So any table where you have a user ID, I can say using current user ID from, from attendance, find my sessions, find them my location for each of my sessions. So where am I supposed to show up next week? Where am I supposed to show up the week after? That, that sort of thing. As, 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 thank you, Deepthi. That was a very good example. The, uh, or going, going backwards, if, for example, I'm looking for, because I want to display on the user's dashboard information that may be contained within the basic training class itself. So, so obviously within the curriculum, I've got my description. I'll also have the course syllabus. I might have things that you need to do to prepare for it. So if I want to, going backwards from, from either registration or from attendance, go back and pull that out. So, so for this session, you will need to bring the following things, or you need to prepare the following things. So I can have that. I can pull that from just, just follow that particular chain. So, so consider yourself still prototyping, or are you in another step right now? Uh, well, this is, the, it, in general, it, it, is, it is prototyping, but in the, in the, in the same way that, uh, that Jim True was when he was doing the magic tags and things like that, so, so putting together the rapid, uh, you know, temp templates there, this is, content if you're, the, the con con content analysis, where, 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 where Jim works with the, the magic tags and so on in the, in the built-in templating, this is, this is the information that you would actually put. If you, if you were editing the, the WordPress template page itself, mm -hmm. So if you were editing single.php or, or, or post.php, uh, uh, pages.php, that's where you would put okay. that, that code. Okay. The, now, this kind of gives us a, a basic framework of now we know that we can navigate from table to table as long as, as we have a chain of connections. So, so now we need to look at some of our database decisions. How, how are we going to, well, first, first off, like what are all of the tables that we're going to create? So, so in our training table, we just saw that we needed six, six of them there, well, five of them technically. And now we're going to go back and look at sort of the rest of the organization. So this is more of the information structure. Uh, some of this is, is missing because they can c consider it, uh, you know, proprietary. But it's, it's uh, in general, these are, these are the different database tables that need to be created and how we connect them through various relationships. So that gives us, and if you look, pretty much you can get to anywhere from anywhere through, uh, through that, 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 that whole process. Now, making decisions about the tables. So there's information about the volunteers that we need to capture, additional information. So date of birth, because if they're lower than a certain age, we need a minor consent form and so on like that. Uh, gender, uh, they want to have a security uh, you know, security question, security answer, because a lot of people lose their passwords, so we need somebody in there to, to verify that, yes, you are who you are, so what's your security question, boom, so we can reset your password if you lose it, that kind of information, stuff that's not normally in the WordPress user table. Now, here's our, our decision point. We can always create new tables. I could, do, I could make a decision to say, I'm going to put all my user information in a, it's, it's, it's very own 
table for a user, but because WordPress gives us a user table, and there's actually lots of built-in functions to get in WordPress to get information out of, uh, we can just use the function, you know, use user meta and field name. As, as Jim pointed out yesterday, where WordPress gives you a function, gives you those, those capabilities, use it. Don't, don't invent the new, uh, a new wheel just simply because it seems like a good idea. So here we made decisions about what goes into the user table, and this is things such as the uh, um, title, what church they belong to, because you're only going to have one, one church that somebody goes to, uh, the, uh, what, what their current status is, their birthday. So information that is all, that's, that's, that's going to be very user specific, typically not going to change or, or not going to change very often and is is going to be when whenever we do queries about a user is going is it's I mean if it's if we have get user ID then we can get user ID date of birth and etc so that's uh, that was a very easy decision Next one was the idea of taxonomies. So as we understand, taxonomies are just simply a fancy word for categories. Now, the, this, is, this is the various things where titles, certifications, things like that. So once somebody has gone through a particular set of training and they have that certification, now we can connect it. So, so we just have that certification name, that training name, that, 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 that title, that whatever. We can attach that to that individual. We don't need any other information about it other than the fact that they have completed the training, they've got the certification. So, so that's very easy to make as a taxonomy. There's not additional information that we need other than, yep, you got it. The uh, uh, things like user interests, for example, is all of the certifications you would like to have but don't have currently. Well, the advantage of that is now we can do a very easy search on that to say when a course is coming up, we can now contact you directly and say, we have just scheduled the following course that you expressed interest in and so on like that. So it's, it's, so we're looking at not only nice things from the standpoint of the user that they can go into their profile, they can check, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. But now from the standpoint of the, of, of the training staff, they can very easily and very quickly find the people who have expressed interest. They can also do things like say, how many people have we have that have expressed interest in it? Because once we pass a certain threshold, now it might be worth our time to schedule that course. So no sense scheduling it if we only have two people that uh, expressed any interest. So, and one of the things that Jim had talked about yesterday was the idea of facet searches. And, it, and facet WP, okay. So, so understanding tax, so, so this is one of the great advantages of what taxonomies do for you and how that's set up. So what I want to do here is, whoops, um, nope, go back. How do I do this? There we go. That's how we click on it. Link. So, this is over my shoulder here. So, the idea of facet searches, and these are, these facets are basically just taxonomy information that's pulled out of here. So say, for example, I'm interested in just accurate. I can click that and this will display just accurate. Or I can say that I'm looking for vans. Okay, there's 12 vans. And I just want Ford vans. And there's my two Ford vans. So we understand now that, again, going back to our training thing, we can say who's expressed interest in this, click a button, presto, now we see we have two people who have expressed interest or we've had, you know, 50 people who have expressed interest in this. So this is a very quick and easy way to, to find the kinds of information that we're, we're, we're looking for 
we can uh, you know do do things by you know sort, sorting sorting information uh, whether we want two you know two wheel four wheel types of drive there's a, there's a number of of, uh, of demos of doing this sort of thing so for for example there's a um, power plants so if we are interested in just the solar power plants okay so the uh, and something that's that's beneficial to to uh, you know for, for us uh, is, is the hierarchical taxonomies so you know that tags are not hierarchical but categories are so here's here's a case of here we have a northwest region and say we just want Maryland so now we find our one instance that's in Maryland well this is this is a way to if for in in in, in the case of ADRN as they're looking for for example volunteers or people who are trained with a certain certification who live in a particular area who have a certain level of experience who can who are available during during certain times so all the criteria that they're looking for this is all can can be set up just through the the, uh, the user portal and taxonomies now it's it's literally a, just a few seconds to find the people that we need to to to, to contact to go in various places or decide to to train a course or or can teach or coach a course or whatever it is that, that, that needs to be done. So kind of gives you a sense of, of how this, this is starting to all connect together. Okay, so ho hopefully, hopefully this part was exciting. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking at our standard custom post types. Now here was a decision that needed to be made, and this this was uh, I, you know I mentioned yesterday that I needed to have a you know a long chat with 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 Scott about how to structure particular data, one of which is and and talk about for for people familiar with with um, uh, advanced custom fields, there's repeating fields. You can so you can have a repeating field with 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 a you know that, that you just click a plus sign and add a new field, click a plus sign, add a new field, type type of thing. So we thought about there's there's information that is going to be in essence repeating fields for uh, for a number of instances. So addresses, people will have their home address, their business address, they may have a vacation vacation address, they may have an emergency contact address, someone like that. Same thing with phone numbers. People always have more than one phone number. You got your landline, you got your work phone, you got your cell phone, and there's information about, you know, call me at this time of day, call me on this time number, at this time of day, call me on this number, uh, or at this time of day, don't call me on any number. Uh, you know, type type of of, uh, of of thing. Also, with email addresses, multiple email addresses, and so on, like that. And one of the things that we also have is the issue of not not only people having multiples, but also multiple people sharing. So, how how do we know, for example, if we have a number of people in the same household who are there, you have matching addresses between between them. We have the same phone number, so, so matching phone numbers. So one of the things that we decided that we needed to do, and, and this was a conversation with Scott, is rather than putting this in a repeating field within the user table, which we could do, splitting out the address table, the phone, phone number, um, sector numbers, email, so various, various things, and into their own tables. The advantage of that is that, again, going back to the built-in functionality in WordPress, it's very easy to structure a WP query search in a table. Now, the issue with how do we how do we find if multiple people live at the same address? Because if you've got uh, you know Bob Smith and Jane Smith, you don't necessarily know that they're related. However, if both of them in their profile enter the same address, but what happens if they enter it differently? Bob, Bob writes out the word street and, and Jane abbreviates it, for example. So, so using the USPS uh, API, we get a standardized address. Now, 
there's, uh, and, and, and this is not necessarily a directly pods related thing, but the, the, um, we decided to hash the addresses, phone numbers, emails, and so on. So what that does, so, so everybody know what a hash is? Yes, no, no. not really? What? Okay, no. hashing, okay. So basically what, um, this is a PHP function, it takes a text string, does a mathematical operation on it, and turns it into a unique identifier, which uh, if, if you think of like a dartboard, where, where each, each hash is, is like a hole in that dart, dartboard, and, and it scatters everywhere. But the beauty of it is that you can now, because a, stri a string search is a very expensive operation. What the database has to do is, is it, it, it literally goes through every field and says, does this field match? Does, th does this record match? Does this record match? Does this record match? Does this record match? You got a lot of records. That search takes a long time. With a hash, it basically says, I'm gonna take the, all the information in that string, I'm gonna turn it into a, 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 a key. Because if you think about, for example, when you say get user ID equal one, two, three, database only has to go one place. It knows where to find user one, two, three. If you say get record with hash equal this, it has one place to go to find that now. So it becomes an indexed string that the database can go to immediately. It's a very, very fast search. It's adding a unique identifying, a unique identifying component to, to, to that. So, so it takes the full address, turns it into a unique identifier that, that the database can go to instantly. And that way, in the profile now, somebody enters an address and it says, Bob Jones, two people are sharing this address. Bob can click on it and go, really? Okay, I'm not married. So, <laughs> you know, um, but, but it, it's a, uh, but this is, all, this is also the mechanism that to, 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 to eliminate fraud. So a family comes in, they got four people in line, the first person comes in, enters their, their, their you know, name and address, system can do an address lookup very, very quickly, and when the next person who comes, comes in and says, that address has already been entered, because there should only ever be one unique key for, 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 for that address. So now, the idea of, of people trying to skate the system and go through the line multiple times is not gonna work. So, so this was the, uh, the decision that was made on, on, on how to construct those particular tables. Now, Pods also has what's known as advanced content types. Now this is, for those people who've done database work, this is more the traditional table that you're used to. This is where you have one record that has some, some number of fields. And the advantage of this is, is that on an advanced content type, it means you, do one, you read one record and it gives you all the fields that you, you want. Because with, with, with metadata, for example, going, going back, to, uh, going back to, to, to this, how WordPress stores it is there's one record for user ID, one record for address one, one record for address two, one record for city, one for state, one for county, zip code, and so on. So, so each of these fields is actually a unique record. So for WordPress to give you that complete information, it needs to, do, it needs to read about 20 records. Uh, the, uh, the advantage is, of course, that WordPress has built-in search facilities and things like that for those, those fields, so it's very easy to use. On the advanced content type, you have all of those fields in one record. There's only one record read, so it's faster in the database. The disadvantage is that it's not searchable through WordPress. So here we had to make decisions about there's information that we gather about individuals here that are not necessarily going to be things that we would search on. 
We need to know, for example, that somebody, you know, they, they gave permission for a back, background check, that, uh, that the background check, you know, they, they agreed to the terms and, you know, terms and conditions, that the background check was done, that they passed their background check, that they were actually approved based on that, they're not a sex offender, that they've, they're, they're, you know, they've passed, I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, requirements and stuff that they have to go through. So it's, it was necessary from the standpoint of, of all of that information was basically checkoffs that had to be done. Once that's done, they get a flag in their profile that says, presto, you know, you're, you're, you're good to go, okay? So it's never, it's, it's, it's never anything that's, that's, that's searchable, you know, searched on. It's just something that in composite, it sets a, your, the, the status for the, for the user. So we made decisions there based on, on and, and that's, a, that's a lot of fields, so simply doing that as a single database read has, has, has an advantage there. It also makes it easy from the standpoint of the user profile that, or, 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 or actually from the administrative profile that somebody can check off those boxes very quickly and very easily, save that one record and you're done. So essentially, yeah. Yeah, the the uh, uh, and the advanced content string. Yeah, so the advanced content base basically saves saves as as a, a um, um, serialized string. string. Mm -hmm. The uh, thank you. I'm losing my words today. This is uh, yeah. You know, it's it's amazing what happens when you don't get enough sleep. And so anyway, the um, <clears throat> but with with. With these decisions made, now we can begin sort of looking through the process of, um, you know, constructing all of those tables, making decisions about, okay, so, so what existing WordPress tables do we have, like the user table that we can put our information in? What information can go into the, 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 uh, the posts and post meta table that we want searchable and that we want to do uh, those those kinds of like the facet facet searches on what information is going to be just it needs to be there it needs to be gathered it needs to be entered and perhaps sets a, a status or a flag or something but is not going to be information that we need to query on a particular basis and going through all of the tables all the connections all the information that we're gathering put that together and so that's the decision process so. Basically, in summary, it's like it's about bit looking at the data structures of the organizations, then using pods to build those relationships and to navigate those relationships, understanding again that all you need is a connection from this table to this table, this table to that table, that table to that table, and you can follow, you can traverse those relationships so you can get to anywhere from anywhere as long as those those you you, you have those kinds of keys and that um, uh, also and, and 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 this hasn't been touched on I think nearly enough the idea of if you have existing plugins in your site that create a post type or a taxonomy or meta fields you can use pods. Basically, you can extend that post type, and now it becomes part of the. You don't even have to add any fields for pods. All you have to do is you go in and you create a new uh, ex extend a post type in in pods, and and save that. It can be an empty pod, but by virtue of the fact that it is now sort of you 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 said you know just just pull this into my family here. It pods will now manage these traversals. So if you have uh, a advanced what's that? Like advanced custom. Like advanced custom fields, fields. exactly. Yeah. So so any if you've got advanced custom fields that are are, are part of uh, you know some some other post type, or if you've got an image image management post type, if you've got uh, any uh, if calendaring. Uh, post type that's, that's, that's in there, by including that, by extending it with pods, now you can traverse those relationships and you can find things, add things, update information, and so on directly through, through pods. So, and the idea that pods makes <laughs> pulling complicated information together easier. So, I, I did. You can go either way. 
Okay. Whatever, whatever you, whatever you're comfortable with. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm a SQL guy, so I tend to write the SQL statements. Uh, but if you're familiar with WP Query, then then that format works okay. identically. It's okay. uh, there's there's no. Uh, yeah, I, you, you can mix and match. Okay. I mean, you. you I mean, <laughs> that the, yeah. So, so it's so the idea of of do you need just SQL statements? Do you need just WP query statements? You could, if you wanted. Uh, I mean, I don't think you could do one. This, you, no, you couldn't. You you couldn't combine them both in the same search. But but if you had, say, complex information on on a. On a on a page, mm -hmm. say so going back to Jim's idea of an author's page, where you may have here's the author, here's the books that the author has you know has has done, mm -hmm. here's the articles that the author has contributed to, here's the events that the author has done and been <coughs> speaking at, boom 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 boom. You could do one as a SQL search and and and, and two as 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 WP queries. Okay. So. There's so that exists there already, which is not. Well, and 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 actually, typically, it winds up as a combined type of thing. So you're going to take, for example, a membership plugin, and that's what's going to allow your employees and your staff and all to, to sign in, and so you restrict access that way as there's no sense rewriting membership roles and, and stuff like that. And that, that might create fields that you're referencing as well. Uh, things like WP ERP or, uh, or, or, or uh, WP Project Manager, uh, uh, great you know plugins that, that 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 do that sort of thing. Uh, um, uh, any kind of, of um, you know, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's a number of, of CRM type plugins that are out there, and you might incorporate those in, and they they will handle, generally speaking, the the general business functions. I wouldn't write a an, an accounting uh, thing from the ground up. I'd use one of one of the ex existing ones, and I would I would factor that into this equation. What you're what, what what we're looking at here, and this this was a case where the the needs and requirements were so specific, there simply wasn't an off the shelf solution available to them. Now now the things like the and this is I didn't bother getting into this, but the uh, the HR components, the accounting components, it, yeah, that was off the shelf component. The, 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 we we just factored those in. So that's um, so so again going back to 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 pull in pull in some existing solutions if you can find them, and then and then implement the rest custom. Uh, you built something or did you use it? Built it. Okay. Built it. Okay. It's. Um, because, and, and and the reality is it, not not a complicated uh, thing. Base, basically, it's, it's uh, here's here's an incident again going back to to uh, you know what, what, what one of the great solutions in the, in the world is gravity forms. Mm -hmm. So so integrating gravity forms with 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 is it's very easy to take the information from a gravity form uh, and populate pods fields directly with it. And forms, of course, can be set up in such a way that people have, you know, they can be multi screen forms, in which case all that information is buffered until not, not only, not only does, till, till somebody hits submit, but also so that in some instances we, we you know, do, do, do the checking and make sure that, that, that you had the prerequisites for this course. You can't just sign up for this course because you haven't completed your prerequisites, so the information is not even saved. Until the validation is 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 done, so so Gravity Farms excellent solution for okay. for that kind of stuff. So, anything else? Any other questions? Well, in this case, it wouldn't be necessarily be a traversal because what uh, because you're you're in your you're in your post type. So so this is this is essentially a, a just a get meta. That, that so. If you want to do it with pods, it wouldn't be a traversal, it would be one of those. The mm hmm. Well, natural connection? It's a natural connection. Where an actual con con connection, yeah. So, 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 um, how are we doing on time? Uh, Another minute or two? Okay. Um, Oh, so what's your what's your your field name? So it is called. <laughs> and it, it's a. 
Oh, good. Are we looking for uh, so so? Are we looking for just specific instances, or or, or just a a like I don't a, know, so a a get um so the or, or oh or or in a post. oh uh, oh okay so 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 actually here here's here's just the, the um. um So basically, um, boom. Okay. So first, um, Type this way. So I need to be facing the wrong direction. Pretty much it. Okay, and then you could just. Yeah. So, um, and it's uh, like 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 the the get meta. I can also um, cursor. Boom. Okay. So uh, so I can do you know sing single is true. Uh, or 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 false if I wanted to return multiple values, if there's if there's multiple values in that field. Okay. So pretty much pretty much the same same syntax as as uh, um, uh, post get meta. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, I, I mean, it, it it really in 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 many instances actually built mirrors the the the, the built-in pods functions. So or, or built-in WordPress functions. So. Um, okay, anything else? Anybody else? All right. Oh, I almost forgot the most important part. Go build a pods database. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so, all right. Thank you for watching this recording from Pods Camp 2016 in Austin, Texas. As always, you can get help with pods on our website at http pods.io slash forums. You can also get help on our Slack chat at pods.io slash chat. We're inside the hashtag support channel Monday through Friday, Mondays and Fridays all day, and Tuesday through Thursday, the first hour of each day. You can also get help on our wordpress.org support forum at wordpress.org slash support slash plugin slash pods.